Hi, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Here. Brian, when do you need me here? That was unclear to me. There's an agenda and uh We'll need you here, I guess, uh, as uh, suggested by Ellen um, during the Poet Laureate update and during the biennial update, I guess. But I'm unclear as to whether when you need to be here as well. But I don't know if you have the agenda. The biennial is first, I think, and then there's 25 minutes in between. It's Karen really? on the bi. Is, is Karen on the biennial committee? Because I just don't have that on the agenda. I have to update that. Um, I, I'd say she's on the biennial committee. OK, yeah, I mean, I'll update that on the agenda. Because of the poetry component. OK. You know, Karen's been, been coming. She's been very, very busy, very active. OK, I have to just, uh, let me just update that so I have that going in the future. Oh. Uh, before we get too into the nitty gritty, I will announce that pursuant to the mayor's March 16th state of emergency declaration and Governor Baker's March 12th emergency order that modified open meeting law, the March 9th, 2021, a full year later, meeting of the Northampton Arts Council is going to be conducted using remote participation via Zoom. Um, we will have public comment during the Zoom and um, written testimony and comments can also be submitted to arts at Northampton ma.gov. Um, so we do have a public comment period. Is Did anyone want to participate in that or can we, I think we're all members or already on the agenda. Okay, so public comment period has come and gone. Um, has everyone had a chance on the board to review, hi Amen. Um, has everyone on the board had a chance to review the minutes that Kathy Service sent around, or that Brian sent for Kathy? Um, or that Kathy, I think you're muted. If you're yes, they were uh, very short. <laughs> wait, Mo, can I move to approve the minutes? <laughs> yeah, there was a little part in the when the conversation about the um. um Defunding the police, the mm -hmm. language around that seemed a little muddy. I don't know if that's a concern to anybody else, but I remember reading it and it said that because it said that Jesse started the conversation, I don't have it in front of me. We it wasn't mentioned that I don't know if we need to mention that there was a community person who was waiting to talk, but I think that's important. Okay. Well, I think part part of that, and I apologize. I apologize is because I wasn't told that that part of the meeting had started and remember there was like a little thing so that kind of got me kind of I have to admit that I was kind of like in a you know, just kind of kind of I couldn't figure out what was going on at yeah, that point when I came in. so I do apologize but for the for I can amend well let's, let me do that right now so and that's why we we go through and ask right. and it wasn't a criticism as much as just sort of going uh this seems a little muddy here that's all yeah, no that's okay uh, i i recall that the committee member that was in the conversation was not waiting to speak but they didn't want to speak that's what they said in the chat okay. i just want to just i'm just trying to have i want to have like a group check on what happened because mm -hmm. i was very aware of the community person Mm -hmm. But I think they were there to follow the conversation. And I think they were also there for, in support of Ashland. Um, and I think those were the two different uh, parts of that. We can I, change the minutes and that's fine. Is that not true? I don't know if the support, the, the support must have been spontaneous because I do not know the person who was in there. Okay. Um, I don't know them personally and I haven't had any real communication with 
with uh, Northampton um, Abolition um, Network either. Um, okay. So. I, I, I recognize people in it now at, since that meeting and I started looking them up and figuring out what's going on because before any movement with that last thing I knew was uh, just when there was movement during the summer for for that but now that yeah. person was there on their own volition I okay think, I think well, I have, just I can... when it comes to trans issues in this town and and any microaggressions I think there's more than you know, there's a lot of bystanders that will, are either directly yeah. affected by seeing that and will speak up. Okay. So I think that's what that was a situation about. Okay. I, I have the guest's name. I wrote it down. It's Liliana Pollard. I, yeah, okay. Do you want to add yeah. that as the guest to the uh, L-I-L-L-I-A-N-A-P-O-L-L-A-R-D? If you want to add that to the minutes and then. L-I-L-L-I. Um, -L -L Liliana. Yeah, spell her name again. Just spell L I L L I A N A. Okay, and a Pollard. I got that. Okay. Pollard. All right. So we can add the guest. Um, I think from the um, chat, what I recall is that they were uh, wanting to come to 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 see if there was a opening um, public um, public dialogue period, but they came late, and so okay. they weren't initially sure. Uh, if they had missed the conversation, okay. Um, okay. but then but then realized that the conversation hadn't happened yet, and did not want to um, speak at that point. That this is good to have the group uh, the right. group interaction because I everybody has a different perspective yeah, on that, and yeah. that's what I think that's right, Jesse. I think you're you're really okay. That's I spot on. I, I agree with Jesse. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so for the sake of the minutes, let me make sure I understand. So Liliana Pyard was the guest. And they came and the purpose was at first it was going to be speaking to speak about or but then they they just ended up um, just being part of the audience and listening to the interactions. Correct. Is yeah. that they, correct? Yeah, from from what I understood, they mm -hmm. um, they said that they were initially interested in uh, being there for public comment. It's mm -hmm. I'm unsure whether or not they were actually going to speak. OK, OK. Um, and but they missed it. And so okay. they, they weren't sure. And then I, I chatted to them if they wanted to speak and they, they declined to speak. And that's okay. the only interaction I know. But okay. um, so is everybody happy with those amended minutes? So if somebody could make a motion, go ahead, Danielle. And to approve the minutes as amended. Can I have a second? Um, second. Okay, all in favor. Sorry, we have to do Robert's rules. <laughs> That's right. I can't my uh, counterintuitive. Okay, great. So call them Roberto's rules instead. Okay, let's go. Uh, um, good. Our minutes are approved. And the next thing on our agenda, we do have an update from Northampton Abolition now. So we do have some guests in the mm -hmm. room who are going to speak in about 10 minutes. But before we get there, I would like to share some proposed meeting norms. Mm -hmm. that the equity subcommittee put together ahead of this mm -hmm. meeting and in the interest of time i just put the list in the link in the chat and i also oh, i'm trying to paste them in the chat but i'm realizing that i can't paste you can you can share your screen if you want anybody can share their screen or rename their their their, their, their uh name. there you go so i'm gonna read through these um, can you increase the font size Please. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to read through these um, points out loud. And I'm going to ask that if anyone has a question or point of clarity, that, that you ask it after each point. OK? So proposed meeting norms that we use I statements. And that means speaking from our own experiences and perspectives, and not speaking for groups or others, whether we are a member of that group or not. Questions about that rule? Guideline. <laughs> Great. Um, assume good intentions, which is um, a really generous rule that we will kind of have with one another. But it also means that if we are assuming good intentions, everyone has to be really aware of their own personal privileges and biases. 
right? So it's a gift to be to, to be met with the assumption of good intention. And we all kind of have to honor that by being aware of, of where, um, where we are with that. Questions about good in, that point number two. Okay, point number three is to try to call in, not out, which means that we wanna try to point out problems. It's like, we have to point out problems when we see them, but we try, wanna try to point them out in ways that will empower people to be a part of the solution not necessarily um, be shamed. Questions about that? Okay. The next one is to recognize intention versus impact. So that's a little bit of a tricky one. I think a lot of times we may not intend to be harmful, but the impact of our words can be harmful. So I can we yeah. reverse recognize impact versus intention? Great. Because it's the impact more than the intention, right? Great. Yeah, so center how your words are gonna be received. Thank you, that's a great point, Kent. This is why we have our ODEI trainer on the board. <laughs> and then, Kent also shared this document of how to apologize. So I believe this, this list was circulated in advance. We will share this again, but I'm gonna ask that everyone on the board makes time to read this ahead of our next meeting if you have not done so already. Kent, do you, do you feel comfortable giving a quick overview of, of what this document will teach us? Um. Yeah, I wish I had known this before. Uh, can you, again, the, the font size is so tiny. Than this, my, is, this is your document that you have yeah. shared about how to, yeah. Yeah, basically, I mean, I just, I mean, I got 8 million dog. I never remember anything anymore. <laughs> I'm feeble-minded. Uh, basically, I'm sorry is not a deep enough apology. That the goal of these step is to be accountable and thorough, but at the same time, to realize that we can hurt one another and that that's not our intention. So what this is a way of having folks understanding how to take responsibility for their actions so that by, genuining, by genuinely apologizing that it moves you towards a deeper relationship in a nutshell. How about that? Great, exactly. So the the when you realize that that your intentions may have been good, but the impact of your words didn't align with your intentions, um, it's important to apologize authentically as, as Kent laid out for us. And then this worksheet is gonna sort of help everyone wrap their heads around, accept responsibility. And it's really essential to get that last part right, which is do better. Questions about this? Great. The next um, guideline is to lean into discomfort. And when we're feeling uncomfortable, to try to um, see that as an opportunity for growth and learning, uh, not necessarily a, an opportunity to shut down, not an opportunity to um, be defensive, but really like see that as a learning opportunity. Questions? Okay. Um, the next point is to respect people's pronouns and gender identity. Um, we really on this board cannot assume anyone's pronouns. And if we're unsure, it is really okay to ask and it's really okay to default today or to not use pronouns. Questions about this? Okay, the next one is story stay lessons leave. This is one of my favorite um, guidelines. It's sort of interesting because we are, oh, sorry, Ashlyn, did you have a, your hand is up? Yeah, just one thing about, um, I, this is definitely like a great start and a good place to be, but I think also um, using um, like, for, for example, for myself, for <coughs> my situation, like people already know my pronouns, they know it's she, her. So if someone started to just immediately start using they, like as a way to not be able to use she, her, that is more of a microaggression. Um, 
because it's just known and I've been at the meetings. And that's just like an example of that, like where, where it's already assumed. Um, but uh, yeah, using they sounds like a good default. Can we um, make a simple request that everybody puts their preferred pronouns after their name in the um, on Zoom so that at any point, if we have any questions internally, we can double check the person's name before uh, misusing, um, before using the incorrect pronouns. I just changed it to, if you feel comfortable, please add your pronouns to your Zoom name in case folks don't want to share their pronouns. But yeah, I think it's a best practice that that would be make it really easy for us all to honor people's pronouns. And the way to do that is to click the three little dots that are, um, they're white dots in a blue box in the upper right hand corner of your um, video screen. And then you'll be able to click the button that says rename. And you can just write your, your name, your pronouns um, as many have folks have already done. Okay, so story stay lessons leave. Um, Could I make a comment? Yes. So I, I take this very seriously about respect and consideration and appropriate pronouns. But as an older person, I would ask that the younger people for whose generation this is a major issue. It's certainly a major issue for the older people too. But I think if someone makes a mistake, because I might, it's all these years of living one way and, and with all the best intention and without wanting negative impact, I could make a mistake and I wouldn't want to be denigrated over it. It's just a mistake. There's a learning curve here. And I think we should all be very understanding about that. All right. so, Lori, I thank you so much for sharing that. I think our assume good intentions is, is going to set the stage for that. And when there is a mistake, it's just important to have that acknowledgement. Of course. Right? So, so I, I hope that the earlier um, guidelines make, make that possible, right? Like we all make mistakes. It's important for all of us to acknowledge those mistakes, apologize sincerely, and really try and move on and, and do better. So what I'm hearing is that it's a little bit scary and it might be a little uncomfortable. And I'm hoping that we can like lean into that discomfort as a potential learning mode and meet each other with kindness and, and grace and support. I don't know about scary. It's just new. It's a new language. You know, okay. let's learn Chinese. So this is a new language. Great. I love new languages, but give me a minute. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I, I hear you. And I think our intention is to be kind, as we say, to respect. But at the same time, these transitions are important because what we see is that they've called harm in the past. And so for Absolutely. me, no, no, Lori, may I finish, please? please. I was agreeing with you, please okay. finish. Thank you. All I'm saying is that all of these trans transitioning to under when, when many men had to get rid of their sexist piggy language that that transition was important. Having white folks understand how we as folks, black folks want to view ourselves and think is a trend. All of these are transitions. So what we want to do is to present it in a way, particularly within this group, as a way that is caring. And at the same time, make sure that we address the larger community because we are the face of this arts in Northampton. And we know that this community is going through rapid changes and a lot of the community and the folks that we wish to fund represent these younger communities as well as the older communities. So 
it's a it's a tough job. You're right. It's a rule change. But I don't think anybody is really into denigrating anybody. And that word is, to me, a little difficult, more than it can be difficult. And you're right. And so what we want to do is caringly nudge those mistakes out of the way so that we can create a more harmonious time for everybody, right? Of course. OK. I didn't say anything other than that. Thank, thank you both. I, I just want to be mindful of time since we do have guest speakers. I think that that we are on our way to being on the same page. Um, and I want to get us through the rest of our rules and have a collective acknowledgement of them and give people space to add on if there are any others they want to add. So story stay lessons lead. The idea is that, I mean, this meeting is being recorded, which I think I forgot to mention at the top. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted on Zoom. But the idea is that we respect people's confidentiality in this space. Um, and I think that will especially apply to subcommittees. You can take your things that you learn from our time together with you and let that inform other experiences. But the idea is to be respectful of confidentiality. Um, remain open to feedback. So when someone is calling you in, think about it as a gift and a learning opportunity. And anytime you're calling someone in, you wanna treat it as though you're giving someone a gift. We're operating with kindness and compassion. Um, we wanna be mindful of airtime. If you've spoken a lot or you see someone is quiet, um, maybe make space for them um, and be mindful of any kind of privileged identities that you hold that make it easy for you to speak up, that might make it harder for others to speak up. And we wanna set clear boundaries and consequences as a team. So what happens when these, these guidelines, when these rules are repeatedly not followed? Well, that's something that as a group, we're gonna to have to keep discussing and thinking about together, but I just wanna set the intention out there that we are mindful of these, these guidelines um, and ask folks if they have any amendments or other things that they'd like to consider. And as a, as a team, we will continue to think about what those boundaries and consequences might look like. We don't really have them yet, um, but that's for a future, future conversation. So any amendments or additions to this list? Okay. Hey, thank you. That was well, well, well presented. Great, thank you. Um, so, uh, now that we have our intentions for norms moving forward, we can put them into practice as we welcome um, our first uh, update. So this is not the, we have not opened the municipal meeting yet. We are having an update from Northampton Abolition Now. Um, so I'm going to hand the platform over to Yaping Douglas and just share that um, in advance of this meeting, Freeman and many others on the board, thank you all for your work pulling together questions that we pre-submit to Nan, um, Dana and um, um, Jesse, and I'm not, did any, who else worked on that question list? Well, thank you for, for your work pulling those questions together. We sent those to Yaping ahead of time and she graciously answered them. I emailed everyone those written responses ahead of the meeting, you can follow along there or um, you can read them after the meeting. But without further ado, Ya Ping, feel free to um, take the mic. Okay, hi. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for having us here. My name's Ya Ping. I use she, her pronouns. Nice to meet you all <laughs> on my computer screen. Um, yeah, so I'm here tonight with a few other members from NAN. There's Rai and Lil and Robert here. Um, so you might all chime in. Um, so we were thinking we could, um, well, actually we could start by showing you um, some, a, a sort of piece of uh, art that came out of a Valentine's Day event we did two weeks ago. Um, I'm just gonna get it to show you. Um, <laughs> so this is a giant Valentine's Day card. Um, and then inside, there's a, a prompt that says, what would you do, I don't know if you can see it, with $16,522 a day for your community? Um, because that's how much the Northampton police get per day. Um, and so we, we set up in Pulaski Park and 
Um, we had a game for people to play that was about visioning the Northampton that they wanted. We had three of these gigantic cards. One of them we dropped off for the mayor and these other two were figuring out what to do with and how to um, involve the community more in filling them out. But basically people came by and filled out what they would want to do with $16,522 a day for their community. And we had another, some other prompts like what does community safety look like to you? And um, people wrote a whole range of things that you can imagine, maybe as your gears are going right now, of what you would do with $16,522 a day. Um, you know, there was feed everyone, housing, um, education, um, climate justice, peer led mental health support, um, the whole range. Um, I looked at the cards again today and I didn't see a lot of people write down arts and culture, um, <laughs> culture things, even though I think in Nan, we, um, Nan for Northampton Abolition now, we do think about that a lot as imagination is such a central um, thing that I think a concept that we're focused on and that I think we, we've been learning about since all of us have been learning more about what abolition really means since the summer. Um, and so, so yeah, I wanted to give you a, a little peek at what we did on Valentine's Day a few weeks ago. Um, and we thought we could take this time to, um, the answers in the doc are, are sort of long, but we could highlight just a couple things in there. Um, one question that comes up for us a lot with people is, um, the number 50% and how we're calling for, you know, a 50% cut from the police department um, with reallocation into um, systems and infrastructure for community safety that would really benefit everyone. And one thing we wanted to make very clear to everyone is that we know that this change can't happen literally overnight and that um, all of the activist groups and organizers across the country that are calling for what feel like bold changes to some of us who might not be used to thinking about these kinds of changes. Um, all, all of us are committed, know, know that it's an intentional, careful process and that no one is proposing that um, the emergency services that police currently fill would just be absent for any amount of time. That's not the, the world we're proposing or wanting to create. Um, it's that it's, um, yes, you can stop. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that um, what, what we're calling for is looking at the responsibilities that police currently hold and which ones they're really not suited for given their history as coming out of um, slave catching and um, protecting land stolen from indigenous people and union busting. And if you look at the history of policing throughout time, you, you know, there's clear trends of always suppressing social movements and controlling poor and working class people. And so given that it's an institution with these roots um, and sort of charged with being the enforcers of a, a lot of racist laws, um, we, a lot of, you know, for over 150 years, people have been calling for investment into areas that would really help people and support people. And so what we're asking for is that, um, for instance, mental health be taken out of police and given to um, people who are really equipped to respond to mental health crises, which in Northampton, there's a really amazing organization called the Wildflower Alliance that does peer led mental health response. Um, there's a really amazing harm reduction organization called HRH 413 that hires people with lived experience of um, dealing with addiction and drug use to respond to crisis for, um, crises that have to do with drug use and they have harm reduction support groups. Um, there is a group called um, Touch the Sky that does support for houseless people and houseless people are involved in the actual organizing of Touch the Sky and they um, all sort of work their butts off raising money for houseless people themselves because sometimes the grants are so hard to come by or support from social services takes so long. And so these are the kinds of things that we're um, calling to be invested in more um, instead, of, instead of policing, which, which isn't really suited to, to support people in these real ways. Um, and the way that we're, um, what we're asking for is that these other things be funded um, and not for instance, if police are responding to um, to traffic accidents that we, we wouldn't want no one to be able to respond to a traffic accident, um, we would want city leaders to figure out how um, how other emergency responders who are not police could be supported to respond to traffic accidents. So then 
police responsibilities could be taken away as the roles that they were previously filling could be filled by people who are more suited to the response. Um, I just talked a bunch. I'm wondering if, I don't know how much time we have left, if people wanna respond with a question or comment that's maybe on your mind. We have, we have five minutes. I had a timer for eight and it hasn't gone off yet. So sure, we can open it up to board members if there are any particular questions that you wanna hear answered in this setting. I just wanna get a quick thank you in before folks bring their questions. Thank you so much for those really thorough answers that you put in the doc and also great presentation and thanks for all the work you're doing. We really appreciate having you here. Thanks. Thank you too. I extend that thanks. And um, I guess maybe if you could just share really briefly, Yaping or Ray or someone else, why you are personally doing this. Why are you personally invested in this transition, this important transition? I want to see whether someone else from NAN maybe wants to talk. I'll answer. Hey everyone, my name is Robert. I live in Northampton. Um, I've been involved in prison abolition work in the past. Um, I originally kind of became interested in the idea actually while I was an intern at AP Gallery in Northampton. Um, Phyllis Kornfeld had donated a bunch of uh, artwork made by incarcerated people to the gallery. Um, I think it's been shown a couple of times since then. And I remember when I was uh, handling that artwork and feeling it, feeling the paper, touching it, just how the connection to people on the inside, like I had never experienced that before um, or even really thought about like who was in prison. Um, and so that kind of picked my interest in prison abolition. Um, I've mostly volunteered with organizations like Black and Pink um, specifically looks at queer incarcerated people and the mass bail fund. Um, and so I've had this long running interest in it, um, but it wasn't until this summer when George Floyd was murdered and the uprisings began that I really got back into it. And um, yeah, and I guess right now, I guess that's all I'll say for now. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to, to just point out, I do have from Phyllis Cornwell way up on the wall there. You're muted. Up on the wall I, that I bought through Phyllis Cornwell, Cornwell from paintings from somebody from jail and it's been up on in my living room for years here. So I, I know what you're talking about and that's beautiful. So thank you. We have about two minutes left. Is there one more question that anyone from the board would like to pose? I do wanna add, I recognize some of these organizations that are uses um, alternative proposals. A uh, Wildflower Alliance is very, has been very important to uh, peer support community, uh, or at least the um, recovery learning community that it is part of. Um, and I and also um, I've done work with them. Um, they're one of my clients. Um, also, uh, Touch the Sky is something that's new, and I know some of the people through that, and that's also an amazing organization that's been very directly um, supporting and, and helping uh, the houseless uh, population here. So um, those are, I just want to affirm that those are legit resources that I, that I recognize and um, that it sounds like they have, like the, that there's something concrete there to answer some of the questions we had before and weren't really sure what the proposal of the money was going to. I think that gives a much better idea 
unless someone disagrees, but yeah. I noticed that in the document that the mayor allocates the budget and in this year is an election year. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Nan going to put forward a candidate or politicize the issue as part of the upcoming election? Um, are, is Nan aligning themselves with the candidate that is running for mayor in Northampton? Because I feel like that would be very effective um, going forward to make this a political issue during the election year. Yeah, we, we haven't formally decided as an organization um, but we're likely leaning towards not officially endorsing candidates, but maybe doing something like a scorecard or report cards and working with other organizations in the area like DSA that does do more electoral work and looking at candidates policies and we will definitely be probably putting our own volunteer hours into supporting candidates who really want to see a reprioritization of city budgets so that, mm -hmm. you know, more of that money can go to things like arts and culture and houselessness and peer health, mental health support and all of those things. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, Closing comments is just that we're all, I think, quite available and happy to talk more in depth about any of these issues in whatever format works for all of you. And um, we will be trying to also put out more public events in the near future that are educational and community building oriented. So we'll, we'll be in touch about those as well. And we're here and available. Cool. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you all for your work and for this important steps forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank so, for coming. Sorry. OK. Oh, I was just thanking them, too. Sorry. <laughs> Great. Um, Okay, sorry, I'm pulling up the agenda. Okay, I now would like to make a motion to open the municipal meeting. We have a second. Can I have a second? second. Okay, all in favor, great, so move. So our municipal meeting is officially open, which means we will get to committee updates. And I was hoping to also move to amend the agenda to pull the poet laureate section up to the discussion to combine that discussion with the biennial so that we can um, have our guest mm -hmm. here. Yep. Second. Second. Great, thank you. Um, all in favor, I'm assuming. Kathy, I hope that we're here. This is okay. <laughs> great. Um, okay, great. So it looks like our artist reception is currently tabled. So we'll move into updates on the biennial and updates on the poet laureate. Both of those had been allocated 10 minutes. So I'm going to set the timer for 20 and I'll give you a halfway um, estimate regarding time. Okay. Um, I shared a few questions with the, um, at, we've almost finished our call, but there were a few things just to be decided on. And Brian took a look at them and thought that one in particular should probably be discussed with, by the board. And that is, um, in the past, our, all the submissions, the jurors see them as blind. You know, there's no um, personal information that passes along. It's just the, the images or the poetry. And just want to throw that out. Do we continue to do this blind? Um, any thoughts on that? Um, Discuss. I like the concept of blind. I mean, because then it's the work itself that speaks for itself. There's no like, oh, that's so-and-so, or oh, that's so-and-so's son or daughter, or I know this person. It's just the work. I, I myself like that. I agree. Is it, is it okay if I too. say something during this portion? Yes, of course. You're, you're okay. here. <laughs> um, so so I, I will strongly disagree. Um, only because, and just, you know, hear me out, it's not my call, but um, in the writing community, well, first of all, if we have jurors, I feel like we're also entrusting them with making good choices around not loading things with their friends. Um, so I, you, we're choosing professionals to be jurors and, you know, we expect that they'll have professional opinions on that. Um, then um, in the writing community, there is 
really, there is definitely a pushback on having anonymous entries um, simply because it, 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 it seems like it would add to diversity and instead it really subtracts from it um, because there is then no way to consider the diverse applicant um, you know, the diverse pool of, of applicants and work that you're receiving um, and making some decisions around that. Um, and uh, so I do want to consider the person who wrote the poem in front of me and really think about um, trying to make a more diverse selection um, because I'm coming in certainly with my own biases that I can try to fight against as, as as much as possible, but may not be able to if I don't understand whose work it is. So um, that's my pitch. All right, thank you. Uh, if I can just respond, not to just to say A, that as someone who does diversity work and inclusion work with professionals, nothing but professionals, that means absolutely nothing because we all have biases and certainly Folks in professionals, unless they've done a ton of work, we all carry them forward. Secondly, I think you're absolutely right about the not knowing the person's thing and having no information about the person themselves. However, if we ask people to self-declare ethnicity, we get that same demographic without the name. Uh, just, and also to me, if I see the name, you know, uh, Leroy Jones and Leroy is writing in a way that seems to me black, I'm going to, you know, I don't know. I mean, so I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think we, I myself as a writer myself and as someone who does a lot of performance, I have been in both and I think both have their weight. I just think that particularly for young people, I, I'm not sure of the benefit, but I'm just arguing for this. But uh, if we decide against it, that's okay with me. I'm 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 not holding uh, you know my any of my feet to the fire. I I just do think that just being a professional doesn't mean you have biases. It just means that you've got money to do what you do. Go ahead, Ellen. Could visual art and poetry be handled differently? Mm. I I think that's a good question. Mm. I would, um, go ahead. I would advocate for one set of guidelines um, because I would just advocate for one set of guidelines for consistency, but I think that it's possible to do both. I think it's possible to do, um, to ask people to self-disclose. I think it's also possible to ask for an artist's statement Mm -hmm. um, especially um, with with a lead-in statement saying, you know, just sharing our equity statement mm -hmm. and say that we would love to hear about how your lived experience informs your artistic practice. That'll help us making the decision. And, and that'll, that's a way for people to talk about all aspects of themselves that they want to, if they want to. And if they don't, then that's fine too. They don't have to. Um, but that might be a way to get at some of the, the information that will help the jurors make an informed decision. Um, it might be too difficult to do it at this scale, but you could also look at the way college admissions essentially offers where you try to ensure, and certain hiring practices, right. where you want to ensure that your outreach is at the level where the number of um, applicants from particular identities reflects percentages of your audience that you serve or your population, which is, means it's a lot of work on us to make sure that we're doing the right kind of outreach that people do apply to be considered. Um, but then once you have that breakdown, you can also evaluate within, within categories, which I think is kind of how it works, um, not on a hiring side, but you would, you would set it up basically to ensure that you have representation across identities, not mm -hmm. only racial identities, right? You wanna consider ability and, maybe um, gender identity, orientation, all of this, all of this should be considered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll pass to Ashley. Yeah, um, could, could we write down maybe in the minutes that question you just asked? Because um, 
I think that sounds like a good idea. Like even if we need a workshop, it sounds like a good start. It sounds um, from my own experience, something that seems open-ended that someone my demographic could answer. So, and um, yeah, so if we want, I, I think that that might be a good place to start with that question. Just a question. So um, the question in terms of, um, can you? I'm gonna put it in the chat. Okay, good. Oh, you want me to? Uh, I'm undecided either way, but I just want to, with regards to jurying and uh, emerging artists versus uh, established artists that have names that are well known. And uh, I have, uh, I, I think that jur jurors might have a bias towards people that have a name to create uh, more, you know, quote unquote, uh, a, a more validated uh, biennial. You know, I'm not saying that you do, Karen, but everybody has biases. Like, I know this person, they're published. They have, like, if we get like a well-published artist that either gives us visual art, uh, performance art, or poetry, wouldn't the jurors want to include that per person? So our, our, our biennial has more prestige. And that's with the name thing. I, the, other, the, the other identity qualifiers, I think, is a really good idea if we're not going to go blind with the idea of like attaching the name to the work. That's the only uh, roadblock for me is, is what I'm thinking as for the prestige point from emerging to non-emerging art, uh, established artists. So I, I love uh, Kent and Danielle's ideas of... Um, asking asking those questions with an with an entry i think that might satisfy what everyone is hoping for so artist statement and uh and uh to because i have to set up the call so we're gonna ask for an artist statement and go ahead ellen just you know looking back on you know the many years that we've done this so generally about 120 people um, submit for, for just the visual art, 110, 120, 130 people. That's, that's a lot of work for jurors. Um, I, I'm on the fence about this. I mean, we brought it up because I, you know, it seemed like a valid thing to bring up. Um, but thinking about it, and we've always done artist statement with the accepted work. You know, not asking people for a statement ahead of time. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what I think about it. It's just, uh, I, I'm not sure. I think, you know, looking at art is one thing, but then having to read a statement alongside of it, you know, probably at least doubles the time, if not more, than, you know, for each person participating as a juror. It's a big ask. Can we just ask for a paragraph? I mean, I, you know, a paragraph how your lived experience relates to your work. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, if, if we ask for a paragraph, someone gives three pages and I'm reading his, her, their thing, I'm not gonna read all three pages. I'm gonna read a paragraph mm -hmm. and go, this is all we oh, want. That's, that's a good you know? point to keep it, you know. Yeah, just just cool. a word count. I mean, or, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I taught for years and I was like, you know, if you give me more than one page in this report, I'm not reading beyond it. So then that's your choice. And and uh, just for the procedurally, Ellen, I think this year we can set it up where it's remotely done and then it won't be, I know we used to have to get everybody together in one room and look at a slideshow, but I think I can set it up where everybody will have that whole month to do it remotely and there'll be a little bit more time and people can do it on their own time. I know it was always pressed before because we had to get three busy people in a room with another busy person and kind of do it all in four hours. But I think going forward that like the paragraph artist statement is something that's realistically possible. Uh, and then it cuts down on one, you know, a kind of a, a less work as we, if we, after we choose, you know, because we already have their artist statement as well. Um, Freeman, did you have anything to add? Yeah, I've been, I mean, I've been listening to this and, and what I keep coming up with is, isn't it our responsibility to have judges who, who are representative and sensitive 
to um, you know different voices and 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 different styles and different uh, perspectives of presenting, it, you know, rather than um, trying to identify the artist by an artist statement, which you know has a certain appeal, um, but isn't it the the judges who really are, isn't it our responsibility to pick good judges who are reflective of the the breadth of artistic expression, whether it's visual or written um, and and leave it to them to use their judgment. I just you know that's off the top of my head. I, I don't I don't feel wedded to this, but it seems to me that that's the responsibility that we have. Well, I, I hear you, Freeman, but I also think in terms of even Northampton politics, you know, you choose someone that you hope is the best, but you realize that they have learning curves too. And that just because someone is a very good artist doesn't mean that, that, that they're going to be able to, to see the breadth of what comes at them. And I, I don't, you know, to me, again, the way things have been done in the past have been a way to shield us BIPOC folks out of so much. And so like to be able to say my, my, my artwork comes out of my lived experience as a homeless black queer mother informs how you look at my art rather than, oh, I'm gonna judge your stuff without knowing anything that brings it to me. I think I know more about that. You know, if I know, wow, you're a Palestinian trans artist who does this because blah, 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 blah. Or, you know, I grew up in Appalachia. So these things I make were made by my family when I grew up, makes that a stronger piece of art for me. So that would be my argument. Can we, can we move, I don't know if this is a motion kind of thing, to pilot the question and make it optional on the form and not can, have be required, um, but have it be optional because I think having the question signals our intentions, right? Um, the question of an artist bio? Not an artist bio and not an artist- I mean, an artist statement. Not an artist statement because a lot of people, some artist statements will talk about people's lived experiences and identities, some won't. This is a question that's particularly about some how someone's lived experience is informing their work. Well, right? that's what I meant by an artist statement, okay. Right, um, so, so maybe we can pilot it and we and next year when we see, you know, only half the applicants use the question or, oh, everyone actually filled it out or, or people really hated this question or they loved it, um, we can decide whether we wanna use it year after year, but it seems like something worth trying, especially yeah, so, if the parent is on board. <laughs> so would the person's name be included as well with the statement? Just No. I would so, say no. Oh, okay. The jurors would evaluate okay. Okay. The, the, any self, um, uh, any optional, identity self-disclosures, they would have that, they would have the portfolio that they would normally have, and then they would have this optional question of um, how does your lived experience inform your work? Okay, I'll write that down. Right. I just want to make a note of what Jesse put in the chat and I totally agree with. And I think again, not to beat the drum, but by golly, y'all are lost in a Western canon of whiteness. And that, that you bring us in here to change the conversation. And then you say, well, next year, blah, blah. It's been 400 years of next year, okay? All I'm saying is that by golly, maybe it's time to change the way that things are done so that we can begin to look at how people's life affects the work that they do. We say we want a vibrant arts community. We say we want to be more inclusive. We say all this. We're half stepping if we don't make bold choices. That's all. I'm going to quiet my little drum now and I'm going to put myself on mute. But you asked for a black guy on here and you got one. So that's all I'm saying. Um, I, I, just, I just feel like I, I need to clarify something. I, I don't know, Kent. 
and I don't know, Jesse, if you, if the response is to what I said, if that's if that's why you suggested that that I'm suggesting that we stick to what we've done. Uh, I'm a little confused about that because I don't see that as the direct um, implication of what I said at all. No, Freeman, I wasn't speaking at you in terms of any direct, I took what you said and I gave the response. What I'm speaking to is my antenna as a person of color in a room full of mostly white folks who are really dragging their feet around some of these important changes. If the shoe fits, please don't put it on, keep it aside. This is not, I'm not aiming at you. I'm trying to, to bring in what to me is an understanding of how it feels to constantly sit on the outside of things and go, oh, okay, we'll wait till next year. Oh, we're gonna get this, oh yeah. Well, you know, the way we do things in the past you know, this is a public meeting, so I'm I'm watching my mouth, but let's just say frog that, you know? I mean, this is like change is overdue. And the way we look to art in this community is overdue, right? It's just time. And so I'm sorry that I'm so adamant. I'm an I'm an artist, and I just see we're stuck. And I, I, I'm sorry, I, but it's not personal, Freeman. This was not aimed at you. I think I suggested piloting, and I think piloting sometimes is a very um, easy way to step into change. Um, so I'll move that we do it this year and um, evaluate if we need to in the future. Um, but it, I don't think it's actually my decision. I do want to point out, thank you everyone for the feedback and conversation. We we are about 15 minutes into our 20 minute allotment. I want to make sure we spend time talking about the Youth Poet Laureate. So Ellen, Karen, do you want to share more about that part of the program? And Karen can pick up. Um, so uh, with the Youth Poet Laureate subcommittee to the subcommittee, um, we talked about and you received Apologies, a draft of the document that we had gone over. Ellen, did you send around the new one again? I sent it out. I got it. I yeah. got it. Okay. I don't know if everyone has it, but there is an updated one that didn't include our notes from when we last met. Great. Okay. So, um, the things that we were talking about doing, and I don't know how much of this has been presented to the committee, but we're really excited to have um, for the idea of a youth poet laureate position. I don't know if like you all need to, you know, vote on such a thing or um, other things to, to move forward. But so we were thinking um, a person um, of, who is 13 to 18 must be a senior or younger for the 2021-2022 academic year. Northampton, Florence, and Leeds resident for at least this first one. Um, and, you know, someone who loves poetry. And we, and we were definitely thinking, how do we get as many people interested in applying as we can? So um, having them nominate or self-nominate, making the application package small with a small amount of poetry in whatever style is desired by the, um, by, the, by the writer, and then one contact. We would then um, interview finalists, um, you know, and just ask them about their interest in um, being Youth Poet Laureate and in poetry. Would you scroll down, please? Mm -hmm. um, and making the responsibilities hopefully light, um, starting with a one-year term um, promoting poetry within the school or homeschool community and beyond into our broader community. Um, and then designing and completing one community or school-based um, poetry project. And then this, this part is, is actually kind of easy is get is also involving the Youth Poet Laureate in two community poetry readings or performances um, and possibly reading at occasional Northampton Arts Council events. Um, and then other, then we thought, well, what are the fun things that we could do? Um, you know, is it, is the possibility of a stipend or scholarship 
you know, getting a free, like a free membership to the Emily Dickinson Museum or time in the Emily Dickinson bedroom to write, um, you know, a free writing workshop. Um, I was thinking from Straw Dog Writers Guild, um, you know, something fun, ice cream gift certificate, mentoring. Well, okay, this part's less fun than ice cream, mentoring by the Poet Laureate. Um, and then we were interested in having the Youth Poet Laureate installed by August 2021, which would mean having this really ready to go, we were thinking by April 15th. You don't have to scroll anymore because that's just links um, that I was looking at when I was putting together these potential guidelines and thought. So I guess the question is, are there questions, thoughts? Yeah, they don't, they don't need all, the, all of that. That's just links to look at for what other cities and towns have done. The only thing is I might give them a choice as to the writing workshop site to look at several rather than suggest one. Oh, oh, so that, so Straw Dog Writers is the, they hold workshops and so yes. They hold I, workshops I like as well as there's another writing workshop that's primarily folks of color in Northampton. I don't know oh. if you know that. No, what is it? <laughs> uh, I'll have to look, it's, um, I have to look at the name. I'm, I'm, uh, a cannabis head, so I don't, but anyway, they're there. It's run by, uh, what's his last name? Sparks. Is it? Um, Barry? Uh huh. Barry Sparks? No. Oh, it's on my computer and I'm on my computer. So anyway, I'll look it up and put it, but to give that person a choice uh, so that if it's a young poet, he, she, they can choose. Oh, I, I like where they go, and they, they can look at their sites and go. I take. I think both would offer, and, and it might be more easier for a young person of color. I know I went to Straw Dogs and found it a little off-putting myself. So, okay. Charlie, I look at it. So uh, that would be that would that would be great, and it would just be require reaching out and you know asking if these organizations would be interested in. In donating. Yes. How about we just offer them a stipend and they can make their own decisions with it? I uh, like that too. Yeah. We just give them money and they can do whatever they want with it. Yeah. <laughs> Help them with their college applications. You know, they can buy a PlayStation 5, whatever they want. You know, it's just give them some money because that's what we should do. PlayStation um, I, 5 is probably where it would go. <laughs> Maybe in, not. In addition to uh, giving them a stipend, could we um, arrange some sort of deals with some with some of these organizations so that if they say that they do want to do um, a writing workshop and they do want to also do, um, sorry, let me uh, also do. Um, what else? Oh, like do, do the Emily Dickinson um, membership, would we be able to get like maybe some sort of discount for them for those things? So they're not uh, needing to spend all of the stipend on one aspect of it. Um, the other thing I that I was going to throw in uh, was, was just about um, the possibility of also seeing if there's a way that we can publish a chat book of their work at the end of um, their matriculation as the poet laureate. Oh, Ken, and we wrote that. We wrote that in there. Yes, we How did. I was just going to say, I thought that we dropped did. out of the document. Right. Yeah, because huh. we talked about that, and we all agreed on the committee that that would be a great idea. I think that was yeah, your yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 sorry, there, there's a. It's all right. Anyway. That's so exactly should, I, I, should I add that in there? Should I add that would that be great. There? Yeah, great idea. Mm -hmm. Publish a chapbook of work, your work. Bonnie. So I want to I wanna comment on the, I, I don't want to pressure other organizations to give us a discount because we're the Arts Council and there are other nonprofit organizations that are probably trying to get yeah. things. So uh, I would we could take it a step further and maybe like offer some kind of collaboration or 
we can offer, you know, there has to be some kind of, you know, exchange of things that are of equal value to get a discount of such. So I think we could discuss it more and think about maybe some kind of cross promotion or collaboration on an event or, or, or something like that. But I, I feel uncomfortable like asking like the Emily Dickinson Museum to give us a free pass unless, you know, we give them like free advertising uh, to get mm. people to go to their museum or, or we do some of the same kind of thing with straw dog, like some kind of like uh, equal value exchange. So I feel like we're not using our, our, like our power to, to get, to ask for things like that. So that's just my first thoughts on that. I, you know, yeah. obviously we can, this is going to be a longer conversation. Yeah. I think I was just trying to see how, how we could get more bang for the buck out of. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good idea. Uh, would we allow other youth to also vote on who the poet laureate is? And good question. Assuming that this is the first one, would this person also be uh, have a say in on who is next to take their role? Mm. Good mm. question. <laughs> who normally? Not it's so those aren't things that we've considered. Um, I imagine it would be up to the board to make that decision at, you know, probably after the first. I would, I would hate to see it shut down where, where, you know, where it was the decision of the current youth poet laureate to decide the next. No, 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 not single-handedly, but I mean, let that person have a voice in the room on... Like, be be one of the people who was interviewing, and I, I love it. I love the right. idea of giving agency and responsibility mm -hmm. to somebody. I do, too. I support that. <laughs> it's, it's a good idea, and I think, you know, uh, as opposed to giving, like, then as opposed to like making them take the responsibility or about giving them the option. I've worked with high school students in the past. And sometimes when I'm trying to, they graduate, I'm trying to work with them while they're in college. It's more difficult because their life is outside of Northampton. Mm -hmm. So I, I could see how it would work with lower, like a, like a sophomore or a younger person, but um, mm -hmm. I've had difficulty to have a longevity relation, like a more long relationship with uh, students that like matriculate to college or move out of the area right. um, to get them to have that kind of Northampton kind of responsibility in mind when they're like in California or Hawaii or whatever they, they go. But I think that's a really good idea because that's how we do it now with the current poet laureate. Uh, Karen gets to be part of the process of picking the next one. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry we didn't see your hand up. I'm sorry that I was paying attention to that. I was, you know, I, I um, get stuck in it. So just to finish up, um, Brian said he was going to attend our next meeting on March 22nd. That's, is that good, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we do the um, biennial followed by the Poet Laureate. They, they usually were under, you know, an hour and a half or so. And, um, and I guess we can... Uh, finalize these calls. I, 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 I like the option, the option, the having the optional information on the, so for people to self-identify if they want or not. Kent, do you feel like that is? Uh, I think it should be uh, optional. Okay. I, yeah. I, that's, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't force that's... anybody to self-identify, but I do think that most BIPOC people are willing to do so. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think, like so what I have is notes right now and we can, uh, I, I feel like there's a little bit of a consensus over the board is um, self-identify and then have an optional question that's optional. And then another optional question, how does your lived experience inform your work? Um, is that how, how, where we landed? Is that like a pretty decent, like optional questions for the upcoming biennial? Do we feel that, go, go ahead. Ellen. What about just asking for, pro, you know, pronouns or? I think we should absolutely on the Google form have people, if they choose to disclose their pronouns, include their pronouns because it'll it's help. It's not a Google, it's not a, sorry to interrupt you, Danielle, but it's not a Google form. We're using artcall.org. 
and uh, I'll figure out if there's like a drop down menu, but it, it's a little bit more uh, difficult than the Google form. Yeah. Uh, useful to have if people want to disclose because it'll inform how you write a press release, right? Like that's just useful information for us to always have if we can. So I can do another optional. Great. Uh, Rachel, self do you have anything that you wanted to add? Gender pronouns. Yeah, I, I was just gonna um, maybe, I don't know if this is premature, it might be covered in your next meeting, but I was just gonna ask about timing and when the opportunity would be announced and when a decision would be reached and how to get communicated widely and who's on the uh, on the decision committee and for, for poet laureate, for the youth poet laureate. Specifically. Those are great logistical questions that we haven't figured out yet. <laughs> it's totally fine if that's covered in the next <laughs> meeting. <laughs> You got, are you I taking think, notes, I, Karen? Yeah, I think I think we'll need help. I know there there are there's either a school subcommittee or folks who are connected to the school schools through the Northampton Arts Council, and I think we will need everyone's like ideas and probably push on that to get it in front of as many people as we can. And you know. I just thought of this because I have friends who have kids in different schools, but you know, your, your, your kids and um, your friends, kids and their friends at different schools and, uh, and try to, you know, engage them in that way and have them spread the word, I think will work. And I'll try to do that because I have some friends that, you know, have that are homeschooled, which is one of the things on the list that are at like other private schools around here, also in the public school. Yeah, two things. One thing to add, to that homeschooled, homeschooled in the area, just specific, because it just says homeschooled. Mm. And so it do, it's not specific. And I don't know how specific one needs to be, but I always err on the sake of caution. Someone says, well, my kid was homeschooled, and, but it doesn't blah, blah, blah. Since we're specific about the three other communities, right? I don't know if that's important. But I also think, yeah, spread it through kids, spread it through anybody that you know teaches, et cetera, et cetera. Whomever we can get the word out to, the better. Um, are we going to have it like the biennial where it's Western Massachusetts, it's four counties, or I, I didn't get that out of the doc. Was it just within? With what we, we it limited this first time. For the yep. first year. Limited. Make, the first, okay, it, I, I didn't get that. Okay. Keep it North Hampton Florence leads. Um, after that, you can all make different decisions. But I thought right. for the first year, especially for publicity purposes, it, it yeah. makes sense to, to keep it close. And okay. I agree with that. It's just, as you noted, it said Northampton leads Florence or homeschooled. And I would just say homeschooled within the area or something. Okay. That's all. Okay. Yeah, uh, um, I don't even know if you need that for homeschool. Um, yeah, that's in the doc. Well, that looks solid because we just, you know, when we, we do like calls because uh, we look at the greater community regionally, usually for like the Poet Laureate and the Biennial. So I was thinking, but I, I like the idea of like for the first one, we, we pick a, a hometown hero or whatever, something like that. We just, and it keeps us focused um that's a good idea so i look forward to the next meeting if anybody else wants to join it's uh what is it march 20 monday march 22nd or what is it seven o'clock yeah. 7 p.m on monday march 22nd i'll send the zoom link i'll send it out so okay great thank you thank you everybody for letting me join thanks Karen. and um it was a privilege thanks, to listen to the to the conversation so much appreciated Thanks, Karen. Have a good Take meeting. Care. Thanks, Karen. Stay Bye. well. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Okay, cinema update. Ashlyn, Michael, Jesse, Danielle. Danielle does not have anything to contribute. Um, I'll make it quick. Uh, we had Kids Best Festival. We probably, you know, I don't know how I did it really easily. I didn't really have a lot of uh, options because none of the normal ways to get uh, movies is available because there have to be um, virtually screened. So 
like Swank and uh, most of my distributors that I deal with uh, year by year weren't giving me any rights. So I had to go directly to filmmakers, blah, blah, blah. So I ended up with some interesting choices this year. Um, then I, I got a premier Vimeo account. Uh, I had, a, I edited it all up with a bunch of commercials and some intros and we uploaded the video. And then I had this thing where I would send out the private link to everybody. We ended up getting about probably 50 a day of people watching. Um, the link was up for 24 hours. You can look go on our website and see all the film. Um, I was really happy um, to get the film on Friday, which was, um, Freeman uh, brought it to my attention last year and I was unable to get it last year because it won the Academy Award for Best Short Film Doc. And that was How to Skateboard in a War Zone if you're a girl. Um, that was really cool. That was like an achievement. It took me a long time to get that film and lots of emails and lots of calls. So I'm just really happy. So then we got about 250 viewers. Uh, going forward uh, on cinema stuff, uh, I have something, a collaboration with cinema, uh, with Amber Cinema in the works for maybe an outdoor screening at the um, fairgrounds uh, to be determined by uh, our, our friend, the coronavirus and the Board of Health in Northampton. Um, and we're also looking at options for cinema Northampton, but I haven't had a cinema Northampton uh, meeting yet. And I think we're, we're gonna have probably have another year of just virtual and I don't think the group wants to get together until we can have actually in-person screening because community engagement was the main push with that so that's the cinnamon updates right now um, I'm trying to be more inclusive and, and, and uh, share stuff with committee members um, and when that when we do go back online I'll definitely and be inviting people to the committee meetings uh, for cinema Northampton and any and get more participation with choosing the the cinema that we show to the community. And if you have any other things you wanna like look at, there's one other, oh yeah, the last thing is that we're in the works of maybe doing a, um, uh, we're collaborating with uh, Northampton Open Media and the local skateboard shop. And we're gonna do, uh, I have to call a meeting for this one, a workshop for local skateboarders to learn how to make skate videos. And then wow. we're gonna, we're gonna um, give that for free with Northampton Open Media. And then we're gonna have them like, they can come take all the equipment out from Northampton Open Media. And then we're gonna encourage like, you know, a one minute skate video or whatever, we haven't done to find it. And then have a bunch of entries of local, local skaters. And we're like, you know, cause we have the skate park here and we've done one event there once before. So we're trying to just uh, have like a youth engagement piece with that. Um, we did like a public art piece there and then we had like a kind of a celebration um, uh, it wasn't last summer but the summer before so we're trying to and that was it was well attended it was and uh, a lot of community people came from out of the, out of town too which was really cool so we're gonna gain that momentum with that so if anybody has any um, uh, thoughts about, about how we can make that better I'll start drafting a doc and get everybody involved um, I did want to flag that there is a really cool I think it's called proper nar g-n-a-r okay um, black woman owned skate brand that is participating in like a fundraiser right now for the ethnic study which is a co-working space out of Springfield that two local um awesome queer black women organizers started and okay. right now they're participating in this skate fundraiser and they just might be cool collaborators to bring in um since yeah. we're on the skate mm -hmm. can you get oh. me a contact or yeah. just, I'll, oh if you don't have to i got it i got yeah. it. proper nar and it's springfield i'll i'll uh, reach out and that's a good idea thanks Anybody else have any ideas? You can email me and I'll call a cinema uh, uh, meeting soon. I'm having a production meeting on Thursday to see what we've done because I had the production team just do some talking to the skate shop and North Indian Media and we have uh, buy-in from both organizations. But, you know, everything, I want to have like a big screen at the skate park and show all the films there kind of at night type of thing. But again, we got coronavirus and we can do it virtually again, which is fine, but it won't have the same impact as I'm trying to do is that to, to like get, I want to get younger people and community members all around that skate park. So there's like a kind of a demystification of like that community. Cause I feel like it's identified sometimes as negative. So 
Yeah, and that community is one of the more inclusive communities yes. uh, around. So that's the other cool thing about it. They're already, the community all, all already rocks. Yeah, that's my like park. I like live a minute from it and I play basketball oh, there and I love, uh, yeah. So maybe there's some self-interest, but I don't care. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so uh, that's it for cinnamon updates for now. Um, let me know if you have any uh questions about that and I look forward to hearing from everybody on the committee um, um okay so next on our agenda we have um our equity committee update um so our equity committee had our first meeting a couple of weeks ago and an update that I'll share is that we're going to be having um meetings one week after every board meeting. So we're gonna have monthly meetings after our board meeting. So they'll be on the Tuesday following our board meeting at seven, so same time, in case people wanna um, join in that. And um, would anyone on the committee like to share what we discussed at our last subcommittee session? I liked our uh, intros and our a little in-depth conversations that we shared with each other. That's kind of like we were discussing about the biennial, just getting a little perspective of, of people and their intentions and their experience. So I thought that was really helpful. Yeah, we started the meeting by, you know, sharing our name, pronouns, and then why are we invested in the work we do on the council? And I think ideally it would be great to do that with all of our board members. Um, uh, we are gonna be doing a series of team building trainings around the board to get everyone on the same page with kind of like best practices in equity and inclusion. And I think the goal is that we do congeal a little bit more as a, as a team because we work together and support each other um, and those things go hand in hand. So hopefully that'll come as part of those conversations, which, um, Brian, have you heard, have Brian and Kent, have you kind of, you had identified Kent two potential presenters. Do we have an update on whether those folks are gonna be our? Yeah, I, I do have an update on that. Um, Ange is out, she's in Florida. They are in Florida uh, for a while and they're pretty swamped with stuff. They also, because I decided I don't want to do this as a part of the board. I think I'd much rather fully participate than, than, than to be involved in doing training. And therefore they said, no, um, I contacted another woman and she said that she was not. I do have a contact of a person I just got earlier today um, um, that I was gonna pass to Brian to, to get his take on it. Um, hold on, let me just, um, I can look at my email. Brian, if someone else wants to go ahead, I'm just gonna check my email and get this person's name. If we're, if we're having a hard time with trainers because people aren't available, and I know like every equity trainer is really, really, really busy right now. Mm -hmm. um, we're not the only person asking. No, we're not asking for this. Um, there are folks that I um, that I work with who do trainings for the for the college and and that world that are I think really great. So okay. Martin is the director of the Queer Resource Center at Amherst College, and they are kind of a wonderful human and um, could definitely um, be be a part of that. And then um, Gabe Hall, I believe, is the Associate Director of Equity and Inclusion at mm -hmm. um, Holyoke College. And he is um, another really great programmatic. Like yeah, yeah. But uh, we could also, we can also finalize those presenters at our next week's meeting. Maybe that could be a goal for our equity subcommittee. Mm -hmm. But I did want to put on the radar of the board that we're planning, I think, a series that would maybe be two to three meetings um, and we had outlined that. I don't have the notes from that meeting in front of me, but um, we had outlined like what those things would look like. So if folks have particular questions or concerns or areas of focus that they would like to come up in the trainings, feel free to email any of us. Yeah, Kathy. Okay. 
I, you know, because it's my interest, but I have the question of people because I've, I've worked in, and supported people with cognitive impairments um, and which not only means people with intellectual or developmental disabilities, but it also means people with dementia. So, you know, I think it would be important as part of being a dementia friendly community that, and I think it would be really um, for the Arts Council to also consider, you know, what, what does it, you know, what does dementia mean? And then how do we include people with dementia in our community in the art world? Mm -hmm. Because too, all too often, you know, I've been reading a lot of things about diversity, even in my nursing uh, honor society, you know, when you talk about diversity, they, they completely forget about people with di disabilities, co especially cognitive um, impairments and uh, such like, uh, and with dementia. So I just wanted to make sure we don't forget about that, that part of our diverse population either. Absolutely. Thanks, Kathy. Hmm. And if anybody's interested, I mean, I do training on dementia friends as Freeman knows, so that's, I could offer it to people at some point. That'd be great. That'd be really great. Um, maybe we can invite you to a future subcommittee meeting, Kathy, or to be part of the conversations. I think we're gonna do planning conversations with the trainers um, to get our agenda set. So maybe you can be part of that conversation too, if you want. Um, the board, the equity subcommittee also did talk about um, our guidelines. So we spent quite a bit of time shaping those. So that was not just me, that was a whole group that weighed in and edited and commented. So thank you all for help with that. Um, and at our next, this kind of bleeds into the next uh, bullet point at our next meeting, we are gonna spend a little bit more time talking about um, where equity practices show up in grants and what our, um, metrics of evaluation are um, and what our outreach looks like, et cetera. Yeah, and I'll be able to share with you the changes that we've made for Valley Create, uh, which is a bar funded multi-year project under Community Foundation. And so we've made some major changes and some shifts to deal with that as well as what other organizations in New England are up to as well as outside New England. So. There's a lot of push, particularly for arts groups. These are all arts groups. So it'd be really helpful to look at how they do it and how we might want to do it as well. Any other equity subcommittee um, updates for officially moving on to grants? I have just a like an agenda question, which is if we're if we're going to discuss NAN in this meeting, like I know we had the presentation, but if we're also um, making a decision on on that or or having discussion on that, and I just wasn't sure what where in the agenda that would fit if if that was happening. Brian, what do you what do you think? Would it go here? Would it go? Is do do we have a new business that it could go under? You're on mute. <laughs> if you feel like it goes under equity subcommittee, you guys can discuss it now. Okay, but, we, do, we have about two minutes left in this section, so. Yeah. I don't think it's part of it. I mean, I, I we could take it in the two, A, I think it's gonna be a longer conversation than two minutes, and B, I'm not sure if to pigeonhole in equity is because it's really asking for both individual as well as organizational. So I think it fits outside of that purview, but I'm open so, to when it's discussed. So I just received the answer to those questions while we we're having this board meeting. So I think it makes sense for everybody to be able to review them mm -hmm. and then have a discussion with them. If I got them before, like, and I could set them out on Thursday, that would have made more sense to have a real uh, in-depth discussion um, and have it on the agenda. Uh, but this is, again, my opinion, and this is, this is a board, so you can decide whatever you wanna do, but I think it makes more sense to have it discussed at our next board meeting after people could review the questions and, and feel, you know, feel it out, and I can add that as an agenda item on the, the agenda. Well, and the uh, next board meeting is when, Brian? Every second Tuesday of the month. So right, so that's the second April. Tuesday in April. Isn't there a vote coming up in the end of March, Jesse? Uh, 
So the, it's not a vote, it's the um, police commission is releasing their um, their full their full report. Their full report. Um, next week. Okay. Um, and then basically anything after that would be going towards, uh, you know, movement towards the ultimate um, next big push around the budget. Okay. So we got time. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're they're just started present budget presentations next in the next two weeks. So my budget presentation to the the mayor's office is in two weeks for FY twenty two. Okay. Just and I'm like one of the first first ones. I just do it quick because mine's really easy. I always ask for more money, and most of the time they give it to me. But it's like a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm an incrementalist. I just ask for a little bit more for art, and they're like, "Okay, yeah, that makes okay. sense." Okay, right. right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Rachel, yeah. do you have a direct question about that, or were you just bringing that up for conversation? No, it's a good question. Yeah, no, I, I was, I just wasn't sure if there was a plan for us to talk about it, and I knew that the equity subcommittee had a strong hand in drafting the questions, and uh, so I wasn't sure if it was intended to fit in that section or elsewhere, because I was mindful of the fact that there was some discussion last meeting about having a decision this meeting, or or just a check in and continued conversation. Um, I mean, I. Do you, can we get through everything else? And if we have some time at the end of it, we can do kind of like a temperature check based on based on the conversation we had. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a poll and yeah. So awesome. that, sounds, that sounds good. So grant round, uh, do we have an update on grants for the um, COVID relief grant, Brian? Or we kind of talked about that last time. I feel like the grant committee was represented in at the equity subcommittee and we kind of, I felt like there was a consensus that we were gonna do COVID artist relief as opposed to a uh, competitive grant round for events based mm -hmm. artists art things. So that's the update. Um, I haven't started working on that or drafting that, but um, I think that's where we're gonna go for the spring again. Uh, we're going to focus, instead of having an annual ask, we're going to do what we did last year and have a focus on uh, a COVID artist relief fund. And uh, we're going to contribute uh, after I do a more in-depth financial review of how we're going to be looking for the next couple quarters. Uh, we can see how much we can seed that grant fund with and then try to fundraise on top of that. So that's I think that's where we're at with the grant update. Uh, besides, uh, I sent out did our annual report with the MCC. I sent out all the acceptance letters, and now I'm collecting grant agreements and W-9s, and I'll probably be paying artists within a week or two all the grants that we decided on the, the grant allocation meeting. So, and I love this because I don't have to get everything piecemeal. I just get everything and just pay everybody, and it's like I don't have to think about it all year. Um, because starting up that software from like 1985 uh, to pay out the grants is not my favorite thing. Um, it's called Munis. So, um, so I'm excited about to send those checks out. Uh, I've been really help. Uh, we got a lot of help from some of our board members that presented the grants by responding to um, denied applicants. Uh, I thought Danielle drafted a really insightful, thoughtful email. I shared it with everybody to inform uh, responses going forward. Uh, and um, Michael, this is the first time ever, and I don't, there was a grant applicant uh, that was awarded a grant and wants to have a further discussion about how come they weren't awarded more money. Uh, it's the first time um, wow. uh, I've run into this uh, in my experience. I don't know if people that have been on the board long longer than me or part of the organization uh, have had this happen before. But uh, yeah, so that's happening. Michael's gonna be on a Zoom call tomorrow with the, that particular applicant. Um, and uh, I've given Michael some tools so we can have a good conversation. So uh, yeah, uh, just make sure that, that Michael is a uh, regrets, Kathy, in the minutes, please. Um, any more other updates regarding grant rounds? 
I just have one um, comment about the spring round, which is, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm in full support of another round of, of COVID, COVID relief funding for artists. Um, I think that was a real like bright spot in the work we did last year. And I'm really glad to be doing that again. Um, that, that said, uh, last year, it was a very immediate response. You know, it was very quickly after we went into um, quarantine and uh, people mm -hmm. were put on unemployment. Um, this year, I just want to hold a little space for the fact that um, I, I guess my question, the, the nuanced question to the group is um, uh, like, what about our support of artists who don't need a relief grant? And um, are we comfortable having the fall round be the project-based work and the avenue for artists to apply for funding for their projects in Northampton area? Like, I, I guess knowing that it's COVID relief might mean that um, we have some artists who are just not going to apply because they're just like, oh, I, you know, I, uh, it, it, they may take themselves out of the running. It may be, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, I think it I, creates more money to distribute fewer grants to folks who might still be high need. Yeah. Um, so definitely a trade-off, but. I think, I think I'm, uh, again, I'm 100% in support of that, but I also just want to acknowledge that it, our our typical like mission and work as a grant as a board is to support these two grant rounds that support artists' work and creation. And um, I guess I was wondering if there was a wording way in which all artists are still eligible to apply for their projects, but that but that this is um, a relief grant and that it's, I don't, I don't know. I, maybe the answer is no, there's no, like this has to be a relief grant and the fall has to be project-based, but I, I'm just acknowledging that there, it, it removes a door for the like traditional. Uh, I would argue, Rachel, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jesse. I, you were starting first, so I'm happy to speak after. No, you, you had your hand up, which is proper okay. protocol and I feel like you should go for it. <laughs> um, I might say the exact same thing that you were going to say. Um, I'm just wondering if actually this opens it up a little bit more because it's not specific to um, projects. So if artists are wanting to do projects or if they have projects in mind, um, they're still gonna need money to get those done and they're not able to get money because of COVID. I, I, I guess I just wonder if there's anybody out there who would feel like they would take themselves out of the running for it being called COVID relief, um, you know, a year in and the government hasn't done nearly enough to help anybody. Um, so every little bit I feel that we can do um, can, be re can, 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 can help even more. I don't know if that's a direct uh, reply um, and how I meant it to come out, but I think everyone. You've done okay. Uh, and from my experience uh, administrating the COVID grant fund last year, Rachel, uh, it might speak to your concerns that there were a lot of uh, applicants that we awarded funds to that did use it for their projects. And I felt like the call was, uh, you can use it for whatever you want, right? Like that's kind of what we did. And people, some people used it for projects. Now we could definitely, and I hope you can help me because I feel like you are going to help me. We can, we can cater the call. Like if you want to use it for your project, go use it for your project. Like I had people emailing me is like, do we need to credit the arts council? I was like, no, you just can use it for whatever you want. You know, no credit needed. And that's the one thing that's missing. It's not that they can it's like they don't have to put our logo on it we're just like here's some money do what you will if you need to pay your utility bill do that but if you want to like if you need your art and i feel like i saw a lot of artists because my experience you know working with them and hiring them that applied that don't didn't need the money but maybe they used it to to, to propel their work forward you know there was we, we awarded 132 or 130 people grants and i know 
some of the people on that list personally and their house is very big in Northampton and they probably use it to make work and not just to like pay their bills or their rent or whatever it may be. So I don't know if that speaks to your concerns, but I think we can we can put language in the call that has an, an open ending way to do it. I felt like we did a good job. Go ahead, Ashlyn. Yeah, I just want to speak as someone who did receive that last year. Um, when I did receive it, um, a lot of that money went towards me not just keeping the lights on, but keeping housed. Um, the, even though, um, or, or all of it did, because I only got like, I don't know, three, 300 something, and I was applying for other stuff. But uh, in that time, I was not able to apply for grants for projects because I was already in the negatives for stuff because due to COVID. So that gave me the autonomy to be able to keep things together as a working artist. But also I didn't have really the time to put together a pitch for a project that I'm expected to finish in six months and stuff when I'm already back cycling from other things in my life as, a, as someone's both a working artist. And then it makes it easier for me to do that and pay that and then pick up contracts and stuff that are going to pay me more direct money and more direct commissions. Just, and, and I think, and I think ideally, yeah, it would be better to, to have it where it's, we know specifically where it's going, but just because of COVID times, I felt like that was very relevant and very helpful for me. And uh, things haven't really changed much. Uh, I haven't been able to get um, a lot of uh, bookings and stuff. I haven't really booked anything, honestly. And um, be mostly just because of the kind of circuits and venues I worked in. So um, I think so. So yeah, I, I I think I think it will still be helpful, and I think it's still helpful now because if it, if anything, people are in even less work or even. Or, or there's a higher population of unemployment right now than there ever was. So this time last year. Um, thank you, Ashlyn. Um, Freeman, did you have anything you wanted to add? We will also pull together a grant subcommittee meeting to go through the details of this. Did you have anything you wanted to add, Freeman, before we go to public art? I just wanted to say that I, I think it's a good distinction, Rachel, that you raised. Um, and I think it, it, the fact that we, as you said, the fact that we decided to use the money for COVID relief, I think speaks to our sensitivity and awareness of the need. And, and I, you know, I feel comfortable making that compromise. Um, you know, it feels like we're responding to what's, what's real. Um, so that's, that's how I come to terms with it. So thanks for making, raising the, the, que the question though. Thank you. Okay, so on to public art, Jesse Ashland. I've gotten a few emails from Brian, but we haven't yeah. really met yeah. anything. We have, I haven't scheduled a meeting yet. I've been uh, just wrapping up for Sundays and haven't been great at uh, keeping on task with this. There's a lot going on all the time. Um, Brian, so Oh, I can't hear you because you're muted. Oh, I was gonna say, Brian, would you prefer? Because I know you're you're involved with a few the subcommittees. If um, maybe one of us like uh, pick the time or like uh, spearheaded getting the meeting going. Yeah, that would um, be great. That, I know. Help. I know you have a lot on your plate, so. If you, if anybody wants to do that, I'm I'm more than happy to meet anytime. Um, and even if even if because it's public art, if you want to meet and go for a walk downtown, socially distance, and look at things while we talk, that works too. It doesn't have to be on Zoom. Um, but uh, so there's a lot on the plate. Um, where we're I'm working on the public arts Northampton Public Arts Festival, uh, and I we are going forward with painting a bunch of utility boxes again downtown. We're also be painting, um, Sabrina Dorvainsville is gonna be painting the lime, the wall on lime red, which is uh, right next to downtown sounds and lime red on Pleasant Street. There is a wall 
We got permission from the owner there. It's going to be adjacent to the C3 mural that's been there for years. There'll be a new big mural right there. And Sabrina's from Boston. She's a great artist. We, uh, we had her as a guest here for the, when we were painting the, the cement blocks uh, last fall. Um, I'm excited to have her here. Uh, we're also um, collaborating with the planning and sustainability department again, and Freeman's uh, helping with that as a representative from Northampton, Friends of Northampton Trails. And uh, we'll be, uh, they're giving some money to pay artists, this, the planning and sustainability from a grant they're receiving to have artists paint some of the Northampton and Florence rail trail um, entrances and exits. and. Um, we're helping coordinate the artists and putting a call out for that. Uh, I'm also on the side working with a uh, building owner to get a big wall painted behind um, uh, Heck Academy, which is on Pleasant Street as well. It's on Short Street. Uh, if you ever have, if you ever parked in the overflow parking parking for Roberto's, uh, there's a big blank wall back there. Uh, I'm also meeting with the Northampton uh, Youth Commission about they want to do a youth empowerment uh, in uh, electoral politics kind of mural and I'm trying to help foster them to find a place to, to express themselves. Um, what else? Yeah, I'm working with National Grid, the DPW, private bu bu uh, building owners to find places that we can put more murals in art because I really wanted to have a lot around here. Uh, I've shared some uh, coordinates and calls with Jesse and Ashlyn and I've been trying to be more inclusive but I've been working on this for a while I do this every year so I we just have to call a meeting and I can uh, clue them in a little bit more on what's going on um, I have full support from the production team we got a grant for $7,500 from the, the MCC uh, to do the North Northampton Public Arts Festival this will be the third year in a row that we're doing this um, and we're going to probably invite about 14 artists or 15 artists down. And it's going to be the end of April, beginning of May with uh, Mother's Day weekend as the target date. And we're not, I'm not going to, we're not going to like uh, do any advertisement for public to engage because of COVID. So we're just going to have like individual artists painting different things. And then we'll do a recap uh, and more after the event's over, after the painting's over to push people to go to the new art, but we're not going to have people be there while the artists are painting. We're just going to just kind of like add them to the cultural district map and then kind of do a recap with some video and some photos of like where all these new art pieces are and then check them out when you're walking downtown. So that's kind of the, the big plan right now. What's uh, the public art, the arts council is doing with public art right now in uh, Northampton and, and Florence as well as identifying, I want to paint that big wall next to the police station, but I got to go get uh, some permission for that. You know that wall when you walk down the driveway to go to the back door of the basement? It's just like a big blank wall and the city owns it. I'm going to get a big mural on that somehow. We'll figure that out. Maybe you got school or something to go paint it. Um, but yeah, I'm always learning more. I had a long talk with Donna from the DBW. I've, uh, I work with the Mass DOT and engage with them for their with the stuff they own. So uh, just getting more confident about getting permission and, and working on this stuff. So that's kind of the updates. Hopefully it's under 10 minutes. Any questions? Um, I just had uh, a comment. Um, would you be able to send some of the places that I know some were like, like the place by the police station is like something that's working that's not more concrete but like by Roberto's and some of those spots, would you be able to send that in the committee, committee email of the, the of, yep. um, yeah, of, of, of the places that are more concrete and more, that are in the work? Oh, all those boxes that we want to paint. Did I share that uh, Google sheet with you with the pictures? You know, I'll, I'll just, I'll just reshare that with you. And, okay. uh, and then um, I can also send it in an email too. And those, for some reason, they work on my phone, but when you click them on them on a computer, uh, because the way Google Maps works, it just puts you at the street view as close as possible to those boxes, because some of those boxes are like behind places. So I don't, I, was, I thought I was like really clever and using Google Maps to like really identify all those boxes. But then I was trying to do it with the DPW director and 
she it was she was like it's just putting me in the middle of anywhere with this dot there so it's like a coordination of those map links and then the pictures that i have labeled the same box number it's complicated sorry it's hard to to do that so i'm going to try to make it more clear for you for for you um going forward I, and that's why i'm like that's why I like let's walk around downtown i'll buy you a coffee or a tea or whatever um we'll go to belly of the beast and get uh some bacon oh, i missed the bacon there um <laughs> okay <laughs> Sorry, that's, that's about it. I'm, 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 I'll, I'll try to make it more clear for you, Ashley. I know it's difficult. I think if I see that, I think I just didn't see the boxes. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, I, and I'll go check it to see if, or you said you were going to probably send it again. Um, that okay. should help me out. And, um, yeah. I'll like send that right now. The only, the, the, I ran into a big uh, roadblock because the city doesn't own them all. National Grid owns most of them. And I just sent out a call. I mean, I'll email to the, my contact at National Grid today to see if we can uh, use those boxes. Here we go. I'll reshare that right now with you, Ashlyn, and I'll put it in the thing. And, um, so I, I thought we were going to be real easy. Just pick out all these utility boxes and then, uh, and then the city owns them. And then the DPW just says, okay, you can paint them, but I was on the phone with the DPW and they're like, that's not our box. National Grid owned that one. That's a private one. So I have to do some more work on that. So. Ryan, can you clarify for Kathy and Sabrina from Boston's full name and where they're painting? Uh, okay, Sabrina, I'll type it in the chat. And then Tulani, thank you for your um, question. Oops, sorry. We have a number of, um, items on the of, of committees that are tabled because they're not able to do um, their work at this time. So um, the artist reception, actually Freeman or Lori, do you want to share what the artist reception is and why it's tabled? The artist reception, sure. Is that okay, Freeman? Is that Just to give some background because we have some new of members course. that don't know. Yeah, thank you. The artist reception is a gathering with food and some presentations of the art that we have, uh, the artists to whom we've given grants. And uh, the food is bought and we organized it at Holly Street, not last year, so the year before that, because last year was COVID. Um, and people come and, uh, talk to the artists. There's a little bit of performance. That's about it. It's, it's we are giving them almost a meal and an occasion to meet and greet each other and us. Does that cover it? Yeah. And hopefully we'll okay. be able to, thank you, Lori. And hopefully we'll be able sure. to do it again in the fall or sometimes. Right, we couldn't do it last year and um, can I just say something else? I'm also on the committee with Ellen for the biennial, which is an exhibit um, of artists' work that's juried. This is for Tulani's sake and for anyone who's new. Uh, and two years ago, we did, not two years, last October of 19, we did it at the library where it's apparently always done. Ellen can speak to this. It, we don't know if we're going to be able to have a live opening and meal in the same kind of um, sort of a gathering because we don't know what COVID's going to do. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Sure. Board membership, I think we usually, I, I don't know if we have necessarily a subcommittee for it. Brian, you want to? I, it was just updates that would because we had all these new oncoming board members, so I'd always like update it. But I do have a board membership thing that I know it says table, but it'll make it really quick. Um, we need a municipal clerk to uh, coordinate the minutes with Kathy service. So if there's anybody on the municipal board who would like to self nominate or be interested in being the clerk and would coordinate with Kathy on the minutes. So she is an ink board member and she takes the minutes, but then she would need to coordinate with a municipal board member to sign off on the minutes 
uh, and then submit them to Danielle, myself, and the two of us so we can have it. Does anybody want to, we're interested in doing that to be the clerk on the municipal board or, uh, or that's it? Anybody interested? Any takers? And Brian, do you want to share the difference between the ink and the municipal? Um, hopefully I don't have to because everybody read the onboarding document that we shared. Mm -hmm. So okay. Okay. <laughs> if you're if you're a new board member, you're on the municipal board. Mm -hmm. That's that okay. You are appointed well, by the city of Northampton. Here. The ink is a 501c3 that we use to fundraise to support the activities that both boards do. Um, uh, so basically I would need somebody to coordinate with Kathy. And then if Kathy's not, service is not at the meeting, I would need somebody to take minutes. Well, the good thing is, is that we have a recording of the meeting. So you can always go back and check uh, all the stuff to, to double check, fact check when you're doing the minutes. So, so, so seems like, go ahead. Just to clarify, you're looking for somebody basically once a month after our monthly meeting for Kathy to send her minutes yeah. to that we yes. would then read over and say yeah, you, that's that's that all looks good and then send to you and then send them to me and Danielle and then I would send them out to the board. Like I don't change anything. If I if there's changes, I tell mm -hmm. Kathy she has to add this or do this. Um, and Danielle would do the same thing. And then we would send it out to the board before the next board meeting so we can approve the minutes. That's exactly Yes, Jesse, that's I've exactly agreed, what I'm looking for. I would agree to do this, and Lou, because usually whoever's the clerk, I mean, I would just have to officially do the ink minutes, but um, I'm I'm willing to do as I did before when we had somebody, uh, Courtney, who, who because I'm not officially on the... on the. Um, the She's taken a, a year, a couple of years off the municipal board, or you can't be on it anymore because you're on the agent, whatever. No, I'm not on any of the boards right now on the city boards. Okay. Um, is Courtney resigned? So, Courtney, she yeah. moved. Yeah, oh. she moved. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, basically, I'm be, I'm willing to to take the minutes. And what I used to do with Courtney is send them to Courtney and Brian, and and just because you know so I write things out, but it's always really important to have somebody edit your minutes and and make sure you got them accurate. And then but, when we send them on to um Dan Danielle and Brian officially. That's it. Exactly what you said and what Kathy said. So, and then the only thing is, if she's not at the meeting, yeah, you would have to take minutes, yeah. uh, which, again, is recorded, and uh, we, we could help assist you with that if needed. So, anybody interested? No. It's <laughs> evil. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should ask at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when people are inside. Yeah. Are you self nominating yourself, Jesse? Yes, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I second, Jesse. I second. Okay, we got a second. Do we have all in favor on a municipal board to elect yeah. Jesse as a clerk? All in yeah, favor. Yes. Jesse no, is the clerk. Congratulations. Congratulations. You don't have to do very much work. I mean, because I do all the work, really. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, innumerable thanks, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Oh, again. <laughs> All right. So, uh, any new business for the municipal board to discuss? We're not done yet, though. We have we have to close the meeting. But before we close the meeting, online communications. Well, oh, I'm. Oh, I'm. I'm trying to like change this up for the, the minute taking. So I gotta change how the agenda looks. Because we have to do new business for Muni municipal board and then new business for Inc board. They can't. We can't do new business at the end. Sorry, that's my fault. Okay. Um, I, well, I, I, I just want to share with Tulani what the other boards are. The other. Okay. Yeah. So online communications is like our graphic design, web stuff, poster stuff. Brian, anything else? Kind of it. Uh, right now we're in the middle of rebranding, and Amon and I met. And we went over some options. I I gave those options that we wanted to move forward to the graphic designer who's working on our whole logo rebrand. Um, and he hasn't, uh, I have to basically ask, I haven't got anything back from him yet. So as soon as we get something back from him, I will again, meet with Eamon um, and then, uh, and, and Danielle, and then we will come up with our next point and then we'll inform the board what's happening. And then, but right now we're just tabled because I don't have anything to report. School is um, fundraising and partnerships, particularly tied to Northampton Public Schools. 
um, and Freeman and Lori were kind of just getting started when COVID hit on that. So um, there's that. And then volunteers, Kathy, d d what is our volunteer subcommittee? Well, basically, I mean, it started out with, with any, most of the volunteer has to do around events. So getting the volunteers for first night and or and we can we talk about some of the forced Sundays and just trying to figure out if we have any, any opportunities for volunteers trying to figure out how to um, find them and or organize them during the during the event time yeah. And mostly it's like, yeah it's a support of some of the board members to help coordinate all like because we have to we have to coordinate 120 volunteers on first night mm -hmm. um so i wasn't able to do that myself so it was no. i had like kathy murray kathy service is a stalwart um and we meet and then we figure out how to organize that many people in 12 for 12 hours and uh so that's the volunteer subcommittee and then we also do it for, and then those the two big events are like, well, there's three, there's trans performance, first night and silver cord bowl. And when we need the most people volunteering and then I, I help I have the, the volunteer subcommittee help me with that. And then the four no events. Yeah, four Sundays. There's no events, so we don't need to meet, so. Freeman? I just wanted to say something about the school piece because um, Karen brought it up in terms of uh, getting some help with the, the um, poet, junior poet laureate, and and um, so so make sure you communicate with us because uh, I know some people at the the middle school, and I would very much like to connect with them uh, around this as well as the high school. Um, so I'm certainly you know ready to to make that contact and move forward once we once we want to explore that. Awesome. So thank you Freeman um, for that offer and Lori for your work on that too. Um, if anyone wants to join any of these subcommittees, you the way you join is you email Brian and then he adds your name to the agenda and then you're on it. <laughs> and whoever calls yeah. the meetings just suddenly knows uh, or Brian lets them know that you are to be looped in on those those meetings. So that's kind of the way to do it. It's not, it's, it's not a, very elegant process, but <laughs> that's that's the one that we have. Um, Not elegant. Okay, so new business, and then we close. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'll I'll change the agenda next time. Yeah. So any new business that anybody has to bring to the musical board to discuss. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion to close the municipal meeting. So move. Uh, I move to close. Okay, or so moved. Uh, second. All in favor? Okay, great. So municipal is closed. Over to Inc. Do we have to move to open the Inc, Kathy? Okay, I move to open the Inc board meeting. Second. Uh, do the, do I'll the make this really quick. Go Sorry. ahead, go ahead, Lori. No, go ahead. Do, do the municipal board members always stay for the Inc board? Part? You don't have to. You're invited to, though. Like it's okay. Uh, you can. You don't have to stay if you want to. Just. I'm gonna make it really quick. It's just about money. Yeah. I I haven't had the whole thing. Uh, four Sundays was was we did well. Uh, I have. I don't have all the numbers in, and I have. I'm working on the recap with uh, um, the production team on the uh, income versus expenses. But we're probably gonna make make around nine thousand dollars, which is good for four Sundays. We had uh, varying participation into the, the different events, uh, but in the end, I think you know we I we're we're keeping the, the flame lit uh, for art for people to watch art and uh, silver cord bowl. We probably had you know 500 people watching at different things, uh, different you know on YouTube on Facebook all at the same time. Um, I'm trying to get all those numbers together into one spreadsheet right now. I'm working on that. Um, I'll have a better idea of our audience. Um, I know the audience of it's easy to count the audience of uh, of the Vimeo subscribe uh, the Vimeo views, but the other ones are so many different uh, numbers. I have to really like pare them down and really get the real numbers on that. Um, but it was good. People watched. Uh, some of them were more watched than others. And uh, what's nice is that people can go back and rewatch all of it. It's all on YouTube. It's all on Facebook. Um, you don't have to. Uh, be there the day that we we live, we live broadcast it, which I really like that idea of that people can just come back and check it out anytime they want. Um, 
uh, yeah, so we had a lot of nice notes. People said, I, you know, I got, I got notes in the mail from letters. So it's just nice to keep the torch alive. It's not as in depth of a production as before, but um, I really like some, like I, one of them was like, you make pizza with a local band and I like stayed home and made pizza and it was not very good pizza, but <laughs> the next pizza I made was much better. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, that's good. I also shared a financial snap net snapshot in the email I sent everybody. I don't know if you have that open. Uh, I can share my screen right now. I can open it and share my screen. Um, I think uh, and I'm going to wrap this up. Should. What? I think you should share your screen. I, I am. I'm, doing, I'm doing, doing that right now. I'm on it, Rachel. Here we go. <laughs> Does everybody see it? We need to make it bigger. Can't deny our old eyes. I'm like, I oh, no, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm not oh, too good at the technology. Let me zoom in. Here we go. Right. Okay. Um, 150. Here we go. That's You're right, better. Kathy. I was on mute. Ah. <laughs> no, I'm so bad. Speaking of so that. if you can see, we can mm -hmm. focus on the ink side. This is the ink meeting. Um, we're looking pretty good. So what you want to look at mostly is our, our restricted mm -hmm. funds and our unrestricted. Okay. So I feel like, you know, uh, the whole staff and the board and we really, I feel like for a really, really hard year of not being able to sell tickets, we did a really good job and um, I owe that a lot to, to Peter and to Steve um, and to the board being so flexible to like really just change it up and then be a virtual presenter and uh, the community just really came out and we did a good job fundraising. Um, for all these events and we're still in a really like uh, solid position and I was very fearful you know almost a year ago uh, going into this year but then we made a stalwart like decision all together in June to do virtual presentations and just not wait for it to open up and then that just made my resolve really easy and just like put that forward and I, you know the, the results speak for themselves so we're in a good position um, and uh, I don't I Hopefully by next first night, we'll be uh, presenting to an audience again. That's what I'm hopeful for. But at this juncture for presentation, I'm not counting on summer concert series or trans performance to be with an audience. So I, I'm, think, I'm thinking that those two are gonna be again virtual and then hopefully we can get first night in this year. Um, but now that we have the skill set to to to, per, to produce virtually, uh, I think we'll be okay um, if we don't do that. But I look forward to seeing people again, hopefully by December thirty first. So I can go through this. Um, yeah. So I don't know if you, this is our assets. These are what is actually in our accounts right here, um, and this is as of. Uh, at the dates on the top there. So this is like last week I did this, 3-3-21. And then there's this, this is like uh, checks that are coming in. I haven't put in the bank, outstanding income, or what I haven't like, uh, or somebody didn't send their sponsor check in. These are our total assets uh, in the, with the outstanding income coming up or either promised or I haven't deposited the income, I haven't deposited the checks yet. And then these are our liabilities. I have to pay for Peter and Steven um the fy21 quarter four which is their salary chunk for uh the next three months which would be may uh april may june now that's not a full it's usually around eighteen thousand, but we got a grant from the uh, masters cultural council and that is for i use that to offset some of their so if you look over on this side this is complicated i'm sorry but if you see cip grant right here I use that to offset their salary because it's an operating grant from the CIP, from the CIP portfolio, cultural investment portfolio, which is for operations. So I use that to offset the money we take from the ink to pay for Peter and Steven. Um, and then we're taking that $4,000 out of our um, ink money and we're gonna put that into the city money to, to, to cover that, how we gave out 21,000 instead of the 17,000 from the state. So that's what that is right there. 
And then I have, this is from RCZ 2019. Um, extensions were approved. We have some money to pay out of that, but I keep that there just in case anybody else comes out of the woodwork. And then these are some of our other restricted funds. So these are all restricted funds right here, like liability encumbered funds. These are our restricting funds though. We have to pay Karen still, I have to send her a check. We now have, I wanted to highlight this. I just got a, a bunch, I got a couple big donations for the BG government fund unsolicited. Um, it, it's actually my friend's mother-in-law, which is nice because she has a lot of money, but she just sent us big checks for the BJ Goodwin fund. So right now there's $5,800 in the BJ Goodwin fund, which is fantastic. So I'm thinking we could maybe like pick a time where we have like a press junket around, maybe like ask like if you have a cool project that you've been putting off because of COVID or at some point we can talk of the grant, the grant committee subcommittee can talk about how we can um, put that money to good use. Um, and then this is also restricted. It's, um, so Steve Sanderson's best friend died a couple of years ago and we put together a show. Um, well, he did personally, but everybody, instead of like, like buying flowers and stuff, everybody sent donations to the arts council because he was so tight with him. And then uh, Steve is still figuring out how he wants to create a fund to be in the spirit of his friend. And it's going to be around like, uh, he's working on it with the Northampton high school uh, band teacher and about, it's either like um, uh, at-risk kids that need art or something, but he's still working it out. And once he has something more concrete, he's gonna he's gonna share it with the grant subcommittee, and then we're gonna present it to the board for like ratification, and then have a new grant fund around. It's, it's gonna be around music and like um, at-risk youth or uh, um, youth who don't have uh, a lot of privilege. So that's kind of where he's in the ballpark right now. So that's the ink side. That's when we do our fundraising. This side is money we get from the state and from the city. Um, should I keep on going? Is everybody bored yet? Does everybody want to leave? Or is this good? Right, Tell me to going. stop. Keep going, it's good. Okay. So this is the money we get from the state that we just allocated, 17,800 plus the 4,000 I'm taking from the 501c3 and putting in there, that's our, how much money we're giving out, 21,000 something, okay? This other services programming fund um, is already exhausted from last year uh, to pay for summer concert series, okay? This is what we got for our first night. And that is 5,000 for, for paying artists or whatever we want it for. And, uh, and then 5,750 to pay for the fireworks. Um, that's that grant I just told you about. This is the cultural district grant that we got from the public arts festival. Those are our total assets, but on the city side, if you notice that the balance is zero because we, everything is spent. We don't have, there's no encumbered, everything goes into the city, comes out of it. It's all budgeted and already accounted for. So we don't really, there is the one interplay between the two accounts is that I, the ink takes money to pay for Peter and Steven's salary as a grant from the Arts Count Arts Inc. to pay them. And what that what that the 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 balance is is that the city pays for their benefits and they are all official city employees. So they, they, they get a lot of benefits from that. It's like pension, health, medic medical, medical insurance, dental insurance, pension, um, all these things. So it's kind of like a bargain that was struck between the city and the arts inc that we pay grant wise, we pay for their salary, but then all, they get all the benefits of being a city employee. Um, so that's the interchange, only interchange between that. And then sometimes like when we do an event, the city sponsors that event and then some money comes from the municipal side, like this other services programming fund is for like any events in the park, quote unquote, summer concert series, right? That comes over to the Inc because they're a sponsor. Um, so there, there is some interplay between the two, but it's a wonderful uh, partnership between the two because it makes us very flexible and also gives us, you know, the 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 real you know the reliability of the city funding. So it really makes us uh, a solid uh, organization. The other thing is that the city pays my complete salary and benefits. So that's kind of it. So that is out of this. It doesn't. Need, if we want to look at how much benefit the city gives us. 
um, including the benefits of all this, um, the funding they offer is about probably around between 80 and $90,000 a year, including my salary. And that's including like sponsoring events, um, including first night, uh, and then the benefits for Steve and Peter, and then my salary altogether, it's about 80 and $90,000 a year. And that's, that's a pretty good chunk. Um, I've asked for the next coming, this other services, which is like Cinema Northampton, like summer concert series, anything we do outside that engages the community within, I asked for $10,000 this year instead of $5,000. So that's my up ask. Um, Cause I want there to be more events uh, and then to get better artists and things like that. So that's kind of the wrap on that. Does anybody have any questions? Good job. Yeah, looks good. So I'm feeling we're good. We weathered a tough storm. We still have a little bit more to go, but I feel like uh, I'm, I'm comfortable to, that we'll get through to our next big, hopefully, I'm hoping that we get through the first night and then it's like 40 degrees out on New Year's Eve and we got awesome artists and then everybody wants to party and we see the fireworks and yeah. everybody's happy again and uh, and we do well. Wow. wow. Yeah, I just want a good plan. Well, that's a great plan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping. This is it. Can I hope? Can I be idealistic? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> um, again, if you have ever, any questions, um, Freeman and I are going to have a meeting. Freeman, uh, actually, we need to do one more thing. Um, can somebody nominate Freeman to be treasurer of the municipal board? I nominate Freeman to be treasurer of the municipal board. Can I have a second on it? I second it. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Thank you. I just needed to, because Freeman is the treasurer of the ink board and he serves on both boards. And I just wanted him to, to, to be like officially uh, uh, have him to be a municipal board. So thank you, Freeman. Thank Congratulations. You. We're, we're having a meeting. We're, we're having a meeting soon so I can go over because it's new for him to go over the policies and procedures of of how the, the money is handled. Um, and I have to add them to a couple accounts and things like that, but I'm really happy. Freeman's I'll, been- I'll, I'll, face, I'll FaceTime you uh, from the island that I go to. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You better FaceTime me and send me a ticket. No, um, so <laughs> that's, we're looking good. Uh, and, Don't you um, need a pool cleaner? <laughs> um, they have robots for that now, Kent. I know it's sad. <laughs> um, I'm afraid I, of those robots are fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I've uh, we've all been here for a while, and uh, if there's any more, is there any new business for the ink? Um. <clears throat> Thank everybody. Uh, Rachel, send up. Are we not doing Rachel? the NAN check in? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Whoa, oh, yeah. So I thought we did the NAN check in, did we not? Are we, are we closing the ink? Can I? Oh, I'm sorry. Wouldn't the NAN check in be part of the municipal meeting? Rachel? Yeah. Yeah, did we close that already? Did we lose that? Before? Yeah, we closed the, the municipal closed meeting that. already. Can, everybody voted on it. We didn't. Oh, we did vote to close the municipal, but we could close the ink and then reopen conversation if we, is that possible? Is that allowed? Sure, yeah. All right, motion to close the ink. Second. No, I don't, uh, motion to open municipal. Second. Okay, now we're officially back in municipal, I guess. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know, do we, is that something we wanna talk about now or is that something that we wanna review the um, Q&A and discuss at the next meeting. I thought that was already decided. Yeah, right. We are just going to uh, do a temperature check in and see if I think we're, I don't know, that, that, that was kind of what we were, Brian said maybe to do a straw poll, but I don't know that. I'm going to do it right now, publicly support. I forgot to do that, sorry. I forgot to ask for it, sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. No, that's fine because I wasn't really sure either. So that makes sense to be more explicit. So this poll is just to gauge an interest in whether or not this group will show public support by signing the proposed letter. And then of course we know there are other ways to show support. 
Um, and it's not an official vote, but it's just to gauge interest. And then based on that, someone can call for a vote if they wanted to, um, or we can just have a conversation about it again at our next meeting. Yeah, so I just wanna clarify, when you say support, publicly support NAN, the question is whether we're supporting their demands, is that correct? I think I, it's whether I, we want to sign the letter or write something separate. Yeah, I, I think I think the the grand question here is is whether we want to sign on to their demands as listed on their website, and sign on as the Northampton Arts Council, um, and then as we have talked about in the past, there are other things that we can do either in addition or instead of including writing our own letter of support that um, might be worded differently than how they have it. Um, but I think for right now, let's keep it at the top level and maybe we can uh, have some time to um, talk about this in a little bit more detail at the next meeting. Sounds good to me. Sounds yeah, good. Right. Yep. Should I should I share the results after everybody voted? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So everybody's voted. I'm gonna end the poll. I'll take a screenshot. And then uh oh, I can just share results like this, huh? All right, that's it. That's the straw poll. Um, I think that there's a lot of different uh, opportunities for collaboration that Nan is uh, offering. And I think that we should take next month and we can have review those questions and then I'll, I'll make it an agenda item for the board to discuss. And uh, and then we can, then somebody can call a vote on whether we're gonna, and we have to definitely like uh, make the question very specific like Freeman just did. I, I just typed it really quick and I thought I, what I meant was exactly what you were saying, Jesse, which is like the top level of signing the petition. Yes, Kent? Yeah, I also would, would think perhaps no matter that we could also look at part of this is how the arts council might create programming or something to look at the how we either could support or create our own programming that would be aligned with you know pieces of the demands as well so it's just something to consider i think that was one of the asks of yeah. Them, yeah right definitely i, would I think I, yeah Go ahead, Lori. I, yeah, I would say if we're going to discuss this in the next meeting, which I think we need to do, we need to allow a lot of time for it because there's mm -hmm. so it's so complex and interesting, and okay. everyone has complicated thoughts and ideas about it. So I think we need to give it maybe maybe it's the main issue of the meeting. Maybe it's mm -hmm. half an hour. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I agree uh -oh. with you, Lori. Noted, I will um, do that on the agenda. Um, I, just, okay. I just want to say that it's also, it, it will also be useful, I think, to, to consider what it is the commission actually recommends because that will happen before the next meeting as well. Yeah. So I don't think the conversation should be restricted to just NAN, mm -hmm. but NAN as well as what the Police Review Commission has come up with. Yeah, I think that's all going to be part and parcel. Um, and the another uh, part of it could also, um, like Brian was saying, we could go into uh, a little bit more. And this might this might be in more subcommittees in terms of like either public art or other things that we're doing right. that would um, we there could be some intersections between uh, you know some of the artwork. That we're that we're helping to fund and and right. stuff they're talking. About. That was my thinking, Jesse. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Some of the murals and things like that. Right. Um, I'm always up for a new idea to do some interesting piece of art, uh, as long as there's some energy behind it. Uh, so <laughs> let's 
let's let's let's let's look forward to that. So everybody, I shared the questions with the whole board that they're the answered questions, and hopefully everybody got them in their email. Um, you have some time to think about that, and then as soon as the police recommission report comes out, I will share that with everybody as well, okay. and then we'll and uh, we'll have a, a lively discussion. I'll allot thirty minutes at the next meeting for the discussion. Cool. Um, I just want to I just want to say one other thing that in addition to the answers to the questions that you know, that I kind of was looking at, um, you know, after you sent them quickly. Uh, NAN has an extraordinary number of resources in their website uh, as well. And, you know, I haven't by any means gone through all of them, but, you know, folks might want to take a look at the, that information. Because, you know, um, as you know, I, you know, I, I've had some consider, I continue to have serious reservations about the demand for a 50%. But it was very interesting to hear today that the, the kind of modification of that or the acknowledgement that that's not something that's going to happen, even though the demand says in the next yeah. fiscal year. I thought that was seemed significant to me. Yeah, they they asked or like remnant or like the, the, the beginning uh, foundation of this organization did do the 50% proposal before and it got bumped down to 10. So I think that's like the whole thing is like you, you and within a lot of activism. So that's, that's like a good thing to, to know. It's like asking, it's like asking for grant, you know, I'm going to ask you for $10,000 because I know if I ask you for the five, I want, you're going to cut me to 2,500. So, yeah. you know, you always ask her, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, union organizers. I mean, you know, that's yeah. what you do. You ask for more so that you have some room to back up and still get what you want and need. I also um, want to encourage people in addition to the website. Yaping is such a kind and generous teacher. Yes, so if anyone has a question or just like, oh, this just really doesn't make sense. I would really encourage you to reach out to her. Um, I can just, I think she shared her contact info, but I'll verify that I can share her email address with everyone. Um, uh, she's she's wonderful. So if you yeah. just wanted to chat with her or, you know, brainstorm with her or ask her questions, and I'm sure all the other board members are great too. I just happen to have had those conversations with Yaping. Ping. Yeah, Yaping's Ping's really wonderful. I also, you know, I think the thing to do is ask, you know, talk to your friends from marginalized communities. And I mean, it, the inform there's so many people to talk to about this. And as Lori said, it is an extremely complex issue that requires uh, conversation. So I, you know, I, I, I think we need to, but it's important to keep it on the table. Yeah. Anyway, I'm fried, folks. I'm yeah. yeah. Motion to I just want to oh, go ahead, Brian. One second. If you're not on a subcommittee, join a subcommittee. <laughs> if you're on a subcommittee and you don't have a meeting that's set all the time, like we set the equity committee meeting every after every Tuesday after our meeting, I would encourage you to do that and email the people that are on the subcommittee, which are on is on the agenda. That's all. Try to codify the meetings so we can, even if it's for 15 minutes to check in. Hey, what's going on What with this? Just just try to do work on that, okay? Motion to close municipal. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. So all right. Night. Thank you, all you wonderful night. people. Thank you all. Thank Bye. You. Dana, I love that sweater. I just wanted Thanks to say that. Bye. Bye.